Ladies and gentlemen, Suki MMA is back for UFC 272, and I mean, let's do a quick recap of UFC Vegas 49, kind of late, and with that said, we're going to start doing these on Sunday, I think that makes the most sense, get a nice little video to, uh, you know, ride the high of the fights as you will, there's no football on Sunday, so why not do that, right? So we go 8-3 and three on UFC Vegas 49, once again, we're on a roll, we kill UFC Vegas 48, going 9-3, and three. now we go 8-3 and three on 48, now we go 8-3 and three on UFC Vegas 49, so in 2022 now we're sitting 41 and 30 4 and 2 on the super saiyan pick last week we got brian Mai. we basically said you know hit that under hit that finish i know a lot of people that took that first round finish first round submission i mean that was a, just a live play altogether he closed as a pretty big favorite but I feel like a lot of people ate on that one. So we get another big win overall. 20 and 12 on the Super Saiyan pick. 13 and 7 in our last 20. And overall, 431 and 254 with five draws. 172, 93 and 2 on the last 23 UFC cards. So we're killing it, guys. We're on a roll once again. And what better card to get excited for than UFC 272 and if you haven't gotten a chance to check out that countdown I mean there's something about the skill and the emotion meeting each other in a big fight I mean it made me think of things like Dillashaw and Cruz just when the before is so good and you know what to anticipate and you're just on the edge of your seat during a great fight I mean it's just picture perfect right I mean I think that's one of the best countdowns I've watched in a very long time so if you haven't checked that out check it out it's it's pretty solid a lot of good um old uh just footage of these two guys it's quite well done so I mean without that without much to say about UFC Vegas 49 I mean Kachera I mean a lot of judges we saw two of the three scored her uh the first round it it, it seems like a lot of people really didn't like that decision. And we've got the second one with Gregory Rodriguez. I mean, to say that we split those, I mean, great. But I thought we had the opportunity to win both of them. Gregory Rodriguez, to hear that 30-27 and hear it, hear it go the other way, I was actually blown away. Even right now, I'm kind of feeling the shock again. But, you know, a lot of people had that one as the kind of the... Uh, dogger pass mentality and, and so congrats to all the people that hit on that one kind of a frustrating ones for us on the other side but that's how the story goes right so i mean those were the two that we really didn't care about or that kind of were a wash if you will but outside of that we kill it again and now we move into ufc 272 with a big first fight with Mikhail Lesichuk and uh, Dustin Jacoby so what I love about this fight right two strikers we know what they're going to bring to the table but let's look at Mikhail for a second you know good southpaw what I love about him the attacks to the body that left uppercut that just comes in so powerful he's looked great on his feet in the last few fights <clears throat> You think about the Modestus Buskowskis fight, I mean, that was a great one when you saw them really stay competitive, the pace was met, became a technical fight over the course of three rounds, and I think that's what we kind of have to see in this one, and I think that third round is really going to mean something when it comes to these two fighters, but Mikel looked really good against uh, Gamzatov, who we took as a super same pick, one of the rougher picks that we've had over the course of um, starting this but outside of that I mean a lot of surprises from his game you know the volume and I think what we loved was the the footwork the the way he just bounces on his feet he's got good head movement and for southpaw right just fills those really great areas but then let's flip it to Dustin right he's got that 4-0-1 record on his uh, second stint with the UFC but Let's talk about that quality of opponent, right? I mean, I think that Mikel is a few steps away from the, you know, Ladettes of the world. But outside of that, I think that we're looking at more of that heavy-footed, technical striker. He can switch both sides. But, you know, in this one, you kind of want to see those orthodox heavy kicks coming in from, you know, the right side. I just think that that's a really big opening for him to, to slow a guy down. That's really what you want to do with Mikel. I think that for Dustin, who does want to keep the fight standing, it makes a lot of sense to attack the legs with some leg kicks. Go to the body with some big body kicks. I think that's the one way where you can start seeing Mikhail maybe slow down a little bit. Even put his hands down a bit more. Find some openings there. I think that's what you really need to be able to compete with him. And you saw Modestus have some success with that as well. And, I mean, outside of that, I mean, some of the negatives. In that Juan Adams fight, you, you really think about the third round. Two judges gave it to Juan Adams despite Dustin out striking him 48-27 to 27 in significant strikes. So, I mean, you can even tell in the judge's eyes, despite, you know, out, out, with volume-wise just completely outstriking your opponent, the tiredness, giving up the center of the octagon, maybe not even giving up much control time at all, but just looking like the fighter that's kind of losing despite landing more, it seems to play a part with the judges. So, 
that's where I mean the third round is really going to mean a lot. Who's more tired? Who's landing more? Who's got more damage done? It's really going to be a huge part of the game come that third round. So for me, I'm leaning Jacoby to minus 150, but I think this is going to be an incredible close fight. I think that Mikhail's a live dog in this one. If, if he is the underdog, isn't always. We're going to guess the line and check out the real one right now. And we've got Dustin Jacoby, minus 188 opener, and now sitting about minus 190 to minus 200. And, you know, Mikhail, live dog, man, plus 140 opener, now as high as a plus 165. I really think there's an opportunity there for him to pull off a big one. 